Very good, thank you very much. So the last talk uh, for this uh, Alliance Symposium is on the oops, new kid on the block, ROPEG interferon. I would uh, suspect that because this is a specific MPN meeting, many of you have heard about ROPEG interferon, and some of you may have seen some preliminary results on it uh, at, as it was presented uh, at ASH. Uh, but it's an exciting new development for us in myeloproliferative neoplasms for ETPV and myelofibrosis, particularly early stage myelofibrosis, where we have a potential to uh, possibly have in the very near future a medication that is easy to give with less toxicity than traditional interference with uh, excellent efficacy. So let's see where we are. And uh, anything that I will talk about is coming from Europe, as it was. Uh, presented in meetings so far by Dr. Hans Gislinger from Austria. So I am um, just uh, a messenger if you like, but proper credit needs to be given. That's European development of a medication that is initially coming from Taiwan. Um, and again, Dr. Hans Gislinger is the lead uh, investigator on everything that I will present. Now we know this is just one slide about the basics on interferon. We know about interferon for decades. Uh, some of the Colleagues in the field like Dr. Silver have been around from the very beginning, 40, 50 years. I think he's about eight years old at the moment. Um, it is active. Uh, the interferons are active. There are different preparations, but they come with a quite a high toxicity, particularly immediate release interferons that are usually injected under the skin about uh, three times a week. And the dropout rate is about 25%, usually within one year. On the other hand, the last bullet highlights what was already mentioned, that these medications have been shown, and this is going to be highlighted again, to affect the malignant clone, decreasing and in some cases eliminating the JAK2 positive uh, cells from the patient samples, either blood and bone marrow. And with that background, we go into the rock peg interferon in data so far. A first study that was published uh, uh, a couple of years ago, in 2015, was the open-label study of Robeck interferon in patients with polycythemia vera in Europe. What is different about this particular medication is the chemistry behind it. It is a technology that leads to the pegylated form that releases very slowly, so the medication is given every 14 days. I call it super long-acting interferon because we are accustomed to Pegasus or a peg intron, which are injectable under the skin once a week here in the United States. This is injectable every 14 days, possibly even longer, and I'll show you some information on that as well. And that study that was published uh, with a rather short follow-up was called Peg in Vera, and then later on I'll show you the longer follow-up, where we have here hematological response coming up here, complete hematological response, perhaps not visible very well, maybe in your publication better, the complete hematological response, partial hematological response in a higher proportion of the patients, and it does get better over time. Within a year or a year and a half, you get excellent response. You reach a kind of a plateau in responses. What is more impressive is molecular genetic response. This is in patients uh, with PV that have a JAK2 mutation. Almost everybody has it. This is a degree of a decrease percentage-wise from the baseline in the JAK2 allele burden, and you can see 100% here, so there is a percent of patients, perhaps 20 to 25% of the patients on ROPEG interferon that can actually eliminate the JAK2 positive cells from their samples. So we have a very good hematological response, and we have a, a significant molecular uh, genetic response where there is a decrease in JAK2 allele burden in majority of the patients, as well as elimination of that in a fraction of the patients. So with that basic information from the past, we now have a preliminary results that were presented um, at ASH on a phase three development of, a, of the ROPEG interferon, and this study is called Proud pv uh, This is the design of the study. Um, this was for patients that were naive to therapy, they, but they needed site reduction or they might have been already treated with hydroxyurea, but for the less than three years, and not fully responders. I will explain this a little bit later in much more detail. So patients were then randomized and stratified according to hydroxyurea or previous thromboembolic events, and of course then we have comparison arms 
between ropeic interferon and hydroxyurea. Efficacy analysis was after 12 months of therapy, and then there was a continuation of that CONTI-PV, which I'll mention briefly later as well, because it's important to know what happens with these people beyond just the 12 months of therapy. Now, standard primary objective in studies are uh, listed here. Uh, the goal was uh, non-inferiority between the two arms after 12 months of therapy. The goals were to achieve complete hematological response as outlined here, control of the all three lineages, not just the hematocrit, elimination of need for phlebotomy, and in those that have a spleen enlargement to control the spleen size. There was no questionnaire in this particular study to assess the quality of life, and that's one of the critiques of this study. Why was that not done? It would certainly be nice to see that as well, as uh, Brady mentioned before, quality of life is important. Now, uh, the secondary objectives extended that uh, initial observations to other aspects of what we would like to achieve in polycetemia vera, including uh, the uh, adverse events. Of course, now we would expect, perhaps, because interferon is given every two weeks, that there would be less toxicity, and uh, there was, actually, I'll show you the actual results of comparison between the two arms. And the most important one is the molecular response, which may require, actually, longer-term therapy rather than 12 months. From the Pegasus studies that were mentioned before, we know that a year and a half to two years are needed for the molecular to, uh, results to be seen, which was uh, similar in the phase two open-label study that I showed the results already. Inclusion and exclusion are mentioned here. One word about the hydroxyurea pretreated patients, so there was no resistance to it intolerance or complete response. Basically, patients that were on hydroxyurea but not achieving good response, but without resistance or intolerance. So uh, the allowance for participation of these uh, patients were uh, included in a study as long as they were treated for less than three years. No previous interferon, however, and of course the main problems that interferon can cause, autoimmune diseases or depression, that if they were already present in the patients, that uh, was not allowed to, these patients were not allowed to uh, enter the study. This is the uh, list of patient characteristics, pretty very well balanced. Uh, I'd like to highlight a couple of points. Hydroxyo pretreated, about a third on each arm. As you can see, the numbers are about equally distributed. Perhaps some little differences here on disease duration. The one word on the splenomegaly, there were hardly anybody who had an enlarged spleen. These were not group of advanced patients. That was early stage patients, not much of the spleen enlargement in this patient's population. And the jack 2 burden was in 40s for the two arms. Okay, this is interesting. Um, so upper part shows the median dose of uh, ROPEG interferon over time. And it started very low. This is a time curve, time uh, x axis. This is the dose. It goes up over time and the, uh, the median Plateau dose was 450, which was reached after 28 weeks. So it took some time, more than six months, to get to the stable dose here. And this was in order to decrease toxicity. You see dose reduction was only seen in 25% uh, for uh, reasons of toxicity. The dropout rate was only 16%. While in hydroxyurea, the escalation was much faster. The median dose was 125 milligrams, and it was only achieved within eight weeks. However, the, the dose reductions that were then required in more than half of the patients. So slower and safer, but a longer time to achieve that. The dropout rates were similar on both arms. And this is the result in the hematological findings. This is the uh, complete hematological response. Remember, this was a non-inferiority study, so the result is as expected that there was no difference between the two arms in complete hematological response, right? This was achieved, so the goal of the study was achieved, non-inferiority was seen. In terms of the spleen length reduction, because the spleen, as I highlighted already before, was hardly uh, enlarged in any of the patients, there was uh, no much to improve, therefore, but still analysis was done uh, for complete hematological response with spleen normality, and it was about the same between the two arms. So results after 12, 12 uh, months of therapy between the two arms, ROPEG interferon and HYDREA show 
the same results for hematological response and in the few patients that had a spleen, a spleen response associated with the complete hematological response together. This is where the, the important findings are on the safety part. In addition to efficacy, you always look at the safety, which we highlighted from the very beginning. Uh, these are the summar summaries between the two arms. There are 127 patients on each arm, so pretty good uh, numbers of patients. You see patients with treatment-related adverse events. A difference here, and the grade three percentage, 20% here, 16% here, but this requires further analysis in detail. And here we have a grade uh, these are AEs in 10% or more on either arm with a statistical analysis powered for the difference. You will look at anemia, leukopenia and thrombocytopenia, myelosuppression, much more common as already alluded to, which require those adjustments on hydroxyurea arm and then nausea, fatigue or liver problems, actually more prominent here uh, for nausea for the hydroxyurea. And, uh, uh, slightly uh, different on the part of the uh, ROPEG interferon on the GGT increase. In effect, there was a, a safety signal here that the ROPEG interferon is better on the safety profile than uh, hydroxyurea. And if you look at other known side effects of uh, interferons in this patient population comparing to hydroxyurea, endocrine, psychiatric, cardiac vascular disorders, the percentages of patients that had any side effect from ROPEG interferon was very low, not significant when compared to hydroxyurea. So uh, the summary of that particular study is that the goal was achieved. The result is good from to, on a, at the uh, analysis. Non-inferiority was uh, highly statistically significant, so the same efficacy, but safety and tolerability appears to be uh, the, the benefit of uh, ROPEG interferon, even over hydroxyurea, not to say that it historically compares very well to what we know what the Pegasus, for example, does to a patients. The other part of the study is a continuation of follow-up of these patients uh, over time. This is underway, so the study is ongoing. Here we have uh, expectations to see a molecular response over time on the part of ROPEG interferon and none on hydroxyurea part as would uh, one expect from interferon. We will see about uh, that. We have some early findings here on, uh, on the, the a difference between two in terms of uh, hematological response. This is here hydroxyurea, this is interferon. It's getting better and better over time. But we will wait until December of this year to see more on proud PV continuation. Let's call it continuation PV study. Hopefully in December we'll know exactly what happens when you give a ROPEG interferon beyond the 12 months where this is a bulk of the molecular response that, that happens after about 18 to 24 months. The PEG in, in Vera study that I mentioned at the very beginning as a phase two study was recently presented in a follow-up. This is EHA 2017, so in June, six weeks ago, uh, we have information on a longer term follow-up of 29 patients that were switched after initial period of time from two-week injections to four-week injections. So now it's even easier. Once a month injection with maintenance of uh, the benefit. Now these patients are median of two years on, the week, on a four-weekly schedule and the result is no real change. So what you achieve with the two weeks within a couple of years, you can then maintain that for a longer period of time with once a month uh, injection, which is quite a new development for injectable medications in the MPN field. So in conclusion, uh, we have those two studies that to follow. Uh, they do confirm efficacy of ROPEG interferon. The safety, the second bullet here, appears to be paramount for its use. Efficacy certainly is also correlated to safety because if it's not safe, it's not going to be provided for a longer period of time. And the duration of the benefit as well as ability to achieve better response over time are the factors associated with the use of ROPEG interferon. We will uh, have an updates at ASH, but I certainly hope that this activity in Europe will uh, spill over to the United States with the support of Pharma Essential that is supporting this development in the United States for us all to test this medication in PV soon and perhaps in ET later 
for possible approval in the United States because we don't have any experience with that yet in these two conditions. So thank you very much for your attention.